is Total Warhead and welcome to another early game guide here in Total War 3 Kingdoms. This one is playing Shishi in the 190 Rise of the Warlord start date. And what I want to showcase here is how you can play the campaign to basically achieve as high amount of splendor as you can get from family members being faction leaders, from people being in core positions. So you want to unlock the core positions as soon as you can, have a lot of trade agreements, have potentially the prime minister or be prime minister at the moment to control the Han and basically control not only the southern part of the map and build it up as your area of the map that you control, but also the northern part of the map confederated so you can have it in your grasp and do whatever you want to and go to war against whoever you need to. Now, the variability that this campaign might have versus yours is that I was able to pull off the Dong Zhuo Confederation. It just depends if he actually gets killed or not that you're able to confederate him. So this area of the map might not be acquired. I won't necessarily have Lu Bu as a faction heir. The other variability is you might still be able to get Sun Che with or without the confederation of Dong Zhuo. It just depends that Sun Jian dies on turn 7 or later. So you can actually have a turn to marry Sun Che when he comes of age at turn 7. If it happens, if he dies before turn 7, Sun Jian then you really won't get a chance to uh, marry Sun Xie into your faction. And you might be able to marry Ma Xiao in your faction, but because I created the vassals on turn 11 when I did the confederation of Dong Zhuo, and Ma Xiao comes of age on turn 12, one of my vassals decided to ask for, um, to get defended against Ma Teng, or maybe Ma Teng just declared war on me. So yeah, you potentially won't not, might not be able to pull off the marriage. You might just want to give some food per turn to Ma Teng to make it, not, to make it happen. Additionally, if I were to do anything different in this campaign versus my, the end result that I have here is that I wouldn't create the vassals here just yet. I would create them at turn 21, which is 10 turns after I would have stopped doing deals with the majority of the map because I'm doing a ton of deals with a lot of major factions. But when I create the vassals and I have to defend them, I don't get penalized in reliability for breaking deals with the factions that I have done deals with to get peace with them, get money with, from them, etc. Additionally, I do want to point out some bugs as I'm playing this, so you do note this. It's an interesting one when you get the Prime Minister. Like, say you want peace with Ma Teng, right? And you're like, man, I want peace. Like, you could actually get... Oh, it actually disappeared. What the hell? That's interesting. I saw a bug for a... That you could do the issue Imperial Decree. The turn 11 that I did the Confederation. So anyways, that is it here. I really hope you enjoy this. And let me know in the comments what you think about it, what I should be doing differently. All right, so there's a couple of very important things that I want to touch upon based upon how to play Shishi. So we have a crossroads of culture and commerce. It's a penalty and a bonus. It causes minus 10 satisfaction for non-family members. So you'll focus on getting distant relatives only. And then plus 15% income from Silk and plus 15% income from Spice faction-wide. There are Spice settlements near us, but silk is all the way up here and you can actually take advantage of getting the silk here if you're able to pull off the confederation of the dong faction now additionally you get you can get splendor from family members that are faction leaders the easiest way to do that is by actually getting vassals that are distant relatives you can just grant independence to administrators and make that happen now to make that happen uh, you basically can do it in any place that's not your capital you put a person as an administrator and then you can grant independence now, you can get plus 10 Splendor per turn for up to 5 family members. That's plus 50 Splendor per turn. That is disgusting. Because if you look at this, this base magnitude here is up to 65. And then here a little bit less. And then here you can just maintain it. So, like, you can just keep maintaining this really high. And then keep having Tribute Chess uh, utilized. Now, how you gain Splendor in terms of other ways to get it is by having uh, family members in core positions. That includes administrators. So that's fine and all, but in the early game, there's not a lot of justification to put people into these positions as they are very expensive to maintain. And then you really don't have a lot of commerce or industry income to get a lot of the great benefits or reap the benefits greatly of agricultural economic boost or commerce economic boost or industrial economic boost. Now, administrators also, they're going to be a bit, uh, you know, not really uh, beneficial to have as dedicated so you can just utilize administrators to grant independence to create the five vassals around you now how we're gonna do this i you're gonna utilize the distant relative mechanic to do a divorce sim and marry a lot of characters into our faction now i noticed this as i was doing the early game guide lady she is bugged in that she is not a distant relative so if you divorce her from Shishi, she actually is not a uh, distant relative of your family that's not bad well i mean it's bad 
but it's not like it's the end of the world for us for the divorce sim as we can we still have one Quan who has two females which can basically still grant me the capability of having at least one female available to do the rotations to marry males into the faction and still keep females available as i marry uh factions that have siblings that are male and female that i can marry into my own like han sui han fu among others now to begin the shenanigans here we're not going to touch upon anything on this lower level our first mission here is to put cg into an administrative post we will do that now what we're going to do though is we're going to go into diplomacy and we have visibility with a couple of factions some of them include the nanman and then if you look here you can get trade agreement with the han empire i mean don't get me wrong that's great um i think you could get trade agreements with other factions but then they added the gate passes so we kind of can't trade with this guy over here or these guys up here so i guess there's that but what we're going to wait i don't think you can even see uh liu yang oh yeah you can so whatever okay but what we're going to do here is we're going to do quick deal and then we can get deals excuse me with a couple of factions we don't really care about this military access neither trade agreement we'll care about it later become vassal though this is the key for our divorce sim we're gonna become vassal of dong Zhuo so we can get a lot of distant relatives into our faction so we're gonna go here maybe increase this to like 460 boom and then that's gonna get dong Zhuo really happy with us and now we have visibility with a lot of the campaign map this also expands us to be able to do trade agreement with a couple more factions some of which i want to do trade agreements with or deals with it in general to get them more friendly with me so i can get more marriages done with my faction you can see the Han Empire now is even more favorable to doing a deal with us. It was at 1.3, now it's at 3.1, mainly because our strategic threat level has greatly improved. And then Aggression Pact, you can see you can still get it with some factions up here. And then Military Access as well, Demand Autonomy. We're going to get this from Dong Zhou. We're going to get really happy with him by doing the Joint War exploit to get a lot of people um, to steal mine. all their money and all their characters in marriage, etc. And really get into a really beneficial state for me. So how we're going to abuse the system here in this campaign it is, we is we're going to make regular payments to uh, Shenzhen and then we're going to give a little bit of money instantaneously. So right now she is at current attitude seven. This is actually going to get her There's up a little bit from negative six to negative two. And we're going to do this a lot. And I mean a lot of times in order to be able to get her more friendly with us. Now, before I do that, though, I need to try to get this uh, amount of money that i have immediately to trade high enough so i can get it to positive 15 that'll make the progress of doing this a lot faster so we're gonna go to a couple of factions that will make this really easy for us um well primarily the one that will make it really easy is factions that have more than two thousand dollars in the first turn that includes for example mr liu bei who's down here we're gonna go with mr liu bei and then we're gonna do this and then request payment and let's just keep asking for money from liu bei here let's make it like seven 50 okay maybe not 720 100 jesus Oops. okay that does it so let's just get as much money as we can from him we're gonna go to war against them too but all of these factions that we're gonna go to war against we're gonna be best friends with them and you can basically get peace with them once you liberate yourself or confederate dong uh later in the campaign so let's go here improve this as much as we can let's get as beneficial as close to net zero emissions as we can you know help the environment there we go net zero goodwill stabilizes and then relations. we're gonna keep this going it's gonna be through a lot of factions that what i'm gonna do this talk about? and here oh no i came in just yet request payment you just wanna get this up to it's a positive nine already you see that so definitely working my way up here very you good show me great kindness and then keep going how can we help each other? ohio said now positive 11.3 we're trending we're trending up and yep there we go you show me great kindness. and then going back to shenzhen here it is time we we're gonna make regular payment and it's 11.2 let's get as much money as we still can from her there we go a bountiful harvest requires patience and then i'll just do the joint war exploit with one faction so you can see me do it friends. and then i'm gonna skip all the people that i'm gonna be doing these shenanigans with in order to just speed uh, up the actual video that i'm making here for you and here trade ancillaries these little horsies there we go we accept now how positive is she it now is time we talked regular payments 15 very good so now that we did this right we're just going to this is getting this to positive 15 is what really affects the attitude consequence here to get really positive now she's trending to positive 48 
and the current attitude, which used to be a negative two, is improving to positive nine because of the immediate money that I'm giving to her. We're going to keep doing this here. We take get her to really high, like 300 in attitude. We need to get her super high. And then we're going to steal all her ancillaries as well. So we're going to leave her moneyless and ancillary less on turn one. And then I'll do the same thing with Liu Bei. Here, make uh, payments. There we go. Oop. Excellent. A bountiful harvest requires patience. All right, Sit. and then continue. Make payment. There we go. A handsome offer. Thank you. And then we're almost have her there. Really, Just right. gotta keep doing this. Excellent. A bountiful harvest requires patience. Nice. Welcome, friend. There we A go. Handsome offer. Thank you. So she's almost a best friend, but I want the trending towards to get to 300. This becomes really easy to do once you get to higher magnitudes. She's There's now at 223 trending. Oh. Sit. Let us talk. A handsome nice. Offer. Thank you. What can we discuss? Here, let's get the money back. And then what other ancillaries does she have? A bunch of random ones. There, because we get so positive in attitude, we remove the negative opinion of this idea negative factor. It's really easy to get ancillaries from her. Bid. The 243, Welcome. keep going up because we're going to end up going to war against her. This, we'll get the money back from her. We there we go, 293. Excellent. Friendship. All right. Sit. Let us talk. This is the last one with her. Very nice. Offer. Thank you. Welcome, friend. Make regular payments. And then we get the money back. Very good. And then let me do it with Liu Bei as well. Actually, I'll do that later. So let me show you what I mean by join war against. We have all these deals with her, right? So you would think that that deal is just permanent. It is what it is, you know. But look at this. We can join war against her, right? And Dong Zhuo is going to really like doing this, you know, get deal from her or get this money from him. There we go. Really? Okay. We're going to get this money from him. And he's going to improve his attitude with me. I want him to be, get all the way to best friends or even higher. So when I get to turn 11, he's at best friends if Dong, if he dies and Dong Pei Shan is faction leader and I can confederate his faction. So he's at best friends to make it easier for me. But here, Ten Jan is so positive that it doesn't matter that we're going to go to war against her. There's a good chance that we can be Your peaceful with her. But see, we went to war against her. We get back the money that we were giving her. Right now, the only money we're giving away is the one that's going to Liu Bei. And we're still trustworthy. So now I'm going to go through many factions right now and just basically steal all their money, ancillaries, etc. And then I'll show you the ones that I've done this shenanigan with to then begin the divorce sim. So I'm officially best friends with multiple factions that I am giving a lot of money to. Now I've gotten them to best friends, stealing their two, stolen their $2,000 um, that they uh, start the campaign with and gotten all their ancillaries. So they've been left with nothing to their name. So what I'm going to do now is... These are all factions that are enemies to Dong Zhuo, but also they don't have people that I want to marry into my faction. So I'm going, I just subgroup them uh, in terms of people that I will end up declaring war against into factions that I will do the marriage simulator with and then factions that are just there for their wealth uh, to, and, you know, to my advantage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go one by one through each of these factions. We're going to aid war against them like San Jian here. It's positive 3.3, and then this makes Dong Zhuo happier and San Jian a little bit more pissed off. But I'm so, San Jian is so happy with me that even this minus 50 drop and then the, the subsequent drops for the next 10 turns won't be enough to get him under best friends by the time I liberate myself from Dong Zhuo. Now, something important is that all deals that you do with Dong Zhuo should be done on turn one. Because what happens is that the moment that you try to do, um, what do you call it, ask for liberation. Let me show you this. You see that it shows here minus 50 recently signed deals. This decays very slowly over time. Now, over time, it's like not even 10 turns. It's more than 10 turns before this net drops to zero. So the moment that you do any deals with Dong Zhuo that I think are in the trade and marriage section, I think the wars, the wars don't affect it, or like aiding or requesting permission. So if you add anything probably in the trade and marriage uh, subsection, maybe others below here, you will reset the counter for the recently signed deals and then you'll just be really negative to getting the um the diplomatic benefit here of just dropping this down or po in increasing this up by positive 50. you also want to get to best friends with him so opinion on this idea trends even higher than the negative 20 that you see here right now he's only at friendly not very friendly or best friends 
we can get this even more positive in that um aspect but continuing here going back to aiding and abetting let's go to sanjan here and then let's get all the money that dong jo has left that's uh what can i get okay all the wars now declared against everyone that i've asked for their wealth and best friends friendship and dong jo is now trending to 126 i've also gone to war against a couple of the yellow turban factions that's fine um anything that's basically thrown your way versus shishi's army from early to mid game you know it will basically get destroyed given the crossbow power that you're gonna have so i so talking about that if we go to shishi's army right for the nusha bifa if you put three strategists in his army you keep the imperial bow on his on himself so you keep the 50 percent range firing rate and then you get the nusha bifa here on some on a secondary character to just make the whole army if it's crossbows get 10 percent more range damage to make it even more deadly but aside from that you know we got a lot of items here to trade away or to give to characters to make them happier but coming back to diplomacy now what i want to do is start the divorce simulator so the factions that i care about marrying characters into my own are zerong who has a female that has clerk yuan shu and yuan chao have two yuan characters the one i care about is yuan tan and then that will come to, that will help me with the marriage simulator as it will actually help me have a available female as a distant relative and then yan bai hu i'll see if i can marry um yan ju into my faction i think he's really underrated people don't really take can take into account the advantage of five percent more melee evasion um in terms of auto resolve how much advantageous that is one kwan is the key to marriage he has two females and then aside from that we also have Sun Jian, who we want to get the Imperial Jade Seal with, and we don't want to get really negative in attitude with him, because if Sun Jian does not die in turn five, that means he'll die on turn seven or later. You actually have the chance to marry, uh, marry, marry into your faction, Sun She, who's very nasty to have. And then aside from that, other characters that we want to marry into our own faction, Liu Yao, as a female who has Clerk as well, so minus two construction time faction white when she's a leader. And then continuing onwards, Liu Biao also has a clerk. He's a vanguard. And then there should be perhaps Han Sui, definitely. He has two males and a female. And then Han Fu has a male and a female. So those are all of the essential turn one factions that we want to marry their characters into our own. Oh, of course. How could I forget? Cao Cao has Cao Ren. Oh, wait, I don't have any females available. So Cao Cao has Cao Ren, who is good to get as he has a great bow. That even if you just get him for like, just to get him and release him, getting the bow is valuable as you can build a whole strategist army and then you already have Imperial Bow on Xixi and you can give the other bow, um, the one that you get, the Honor Manifested from Cao Cao, to a secondary strategist and you can really weaken the generals that you'll be facing off against to have a chance to defeat them, uh, the army with just crossbows. Now, coming back here, I'm just going to start doing the, the uh, Marriage Simulator and I'm going to start by doing one example faction. And then continuing from there, because I don't have any females, I have to start with one Quan first. So I have a female available for marriage as a distant relative. So if we go here, what I like to do is make sure that I marry first the one that does not like or is indifferent to the people that she's going to end up marrying. And then I try to find which of these characters has the highest value for marriage. I select them one by one. It was negative 4.6. This is negative 4.4. And then she, she gg is 4.3 and how much was this one again 4.4 okay so the best one for marriage is gg here gg so he's a good um administrator uh to utilize and then chinji xi jing i think he doesn't have much of an advantage as a character and what about this one not really so these guys are good to just release as vassals but you can at least keep this one and then just marry someone, leave someone married to him. And this one's indifferent to him. So let's marry these two that don't like each other first. That's negative 4.3. And remember, I have like a quadrillion items to trade away. So we go here. There we go. We can already do this marriage. Now, I can also get money back. So I don't necessarily lose money over time. So I can just go here and be like, hey, let me just actually trade away more items than I have to actually get this even more positive. See if I can get like a thousand dollars back, which is how much a divorce is worth. Okay, not God damn, dude, really? Stingy ass people, man. I forget this, dude. But it's better to give this to the Han Empire. They're going to have way more money. So we'll do this first here. And then this marriage will piss off Dong Zhuo. That's important. 
Actions that are at war with Deng Zhuo, marriages with them will get him mad, especially if they are factions that Deng Zhuo does not, I mean, sees as major threats like Yuan Shao and Cao Cao and Sun Jian are factions that you don't necessarily want to do marriages with, but we're going to do that. So we'll do this deal first here. And it's gonna piss off Dong Zhuo a little bit. We'll get one of the females into our faction. And then I'm gonna go here to the family tree. We're going to divorce her. And then she's basically not a distant relative right now. But we're gonna make her a distant relative by going back to Wang Quan. And then marrying this lady to him. And then same thing, trade away two items. There you go. Dong Zhuo is gonna get a little bit more mad. Let's do that. Okay. This meets our approval. Very good. So as you, if we go back to the family tree, now we see one Bao Nang is available as so a distant relative for marriage. Now we have two males and a female available for marriage, and we can start the divorce simulator. The tip that I want to give before I just basically skip through all these marriages is when you're doing the marriage simulator, you go to factions that have males and females available to marriage, like Han Sui. And then you marry the female first to your own faction and then you divorce her and then you leave one of the males married to your existing female that was already in the faction that way the female that already married at the beginning of this family that you divorce ends up being a distant relative like what i did similarly with the one uh sisters i think they were sisters hopefully i think they were sisters um here so we're gonna go here to for example do this one and then continue from here shenanigans i decided to trade for the imperial jade seal i just grabbed three of the silver items that i have and then give away across 10 turns the remaining money that i need to make this deal happen and now i have the imperial jade seal in my grasp to further help with satisfaction Please. to finalize this turn i want to give just a high level overview of everything that is done on turn one to make this all a possibility you see all oh my goodness look at all of these things done on turn one so let me just go over every single little thing so we have a good summary of what's going on. So the first thing that we get is that pop-up, right? Of ruler of the Southlands, right? Uh, South, Southlands, what? Southern lands. So we just ignore that. We don't care about that. We, of course, get this mission of assigning Xi Jin to a administrative position. We're not going to do that just yet because I want to use Path of Glory when I get more commanderies or if I confederate Dong Zhuo. Same thing, more commanderies. Let's forget about that one. Diplomacy. I vassalized myself under Dong Zhuo and asked for his money when I did that. And then I basically signed peace automatically with everybody around me. Because when you come a vassal of someone, you get peace with all these factions, potentially mediating peace, that you're at war with when you become a vassal to somebody else to get you out of a hole. But all these guys I'm no longer at war with. And then I basically started doing the little shenanigan of giving money over time to get Shenzhen and many other factions to best friends. Get all your ancillaries. And they're starting money, $2,000 for every faction except Liu Bei, who is $3,500. And then from there, I did join war against these factions to do two things. Net cancel that money that I was giving to these factions and also improve relations with Dong Zhou by helping him in wars against them. So I basically went and did this with Shen Jian, San Yan, uh, Zhang Yang. Oh my God. Sorry for mur murdering all these names. Um, this Liu Dai, I believe. Um, GSC. Liu Sheng, uh, Liu Yu, Liu Bei, the Ultimate Rebellion, might come to bite me down the ass later, and then Yi Yi. Oh shit, I hovered over a marriage. So yeah, I'll go over the marriages now that I did, because then there were some factions that I didn't do this joint war automatically with. I wanted to do marriages with them. For example, Wan Quan has two females. I married both of them into my faction. And by marrying both females into my faction and divorcing one of them before I married the second, I kept a distant relative female that I could utilize to marry males into my faction. So that's what I did there. Then I married Han Anjue of the Han Sui faction. Then I married Han Qing of Han Sui faction. Then I married Han Chong of the Han Sui faction. And therefore, since I divorced the other two that I just mentioned from that faction, there was a female and a male available for marriage. So I still kept a female available for marriage purposes. Then from Han Fu's faction, I married Han Liang, Han Tong, and then I, that means another female was available. And then continuing there, I put into assignment positions. Um, actually, that's weird. This should be this should only be supervised construction. I think I must have canceled their cultural development. So I have supervised construction with Liu Pingming and Senjue in both of my commanderies to help reduce construction costs and construction time. 
and then I joined war against all these factions that I just mentioned that I did marriages with, or at least some of them. And then from there, I married Sejue um, to one of my characters in my faction to get the Zerong based family members into my faction. So that's Zebu and, or Zebu and Sejue. And then from there, I also married Liu Pingming, who's from Liu Yao's faction, who has clerk. And then I joined war against Juan Chu, stole her, all his items, Juan Chao, um, Yan Bai Hu. He starts with a lot of items, so I got that as well. And then I joined war against He Yi, and then Juan Chao. And then I married Dong Ming into my faction. So if the death of Dong Zhou happens, Dong Pei Shan is the only family member available. So she will be available for doing marriage confederation. And then from there, I demanded a guarantee of autonomy from Dong Zhou because I got to best friends with him. And then I dismissed Dong Ming because I just didn't want to keep him in my faction. I adopted Zhang Ming, who starts in my faction, a really pretty good character. So I adopted him so he doesn't get penalized by the minus 10 satisfaction from not being a part of the Xi Xi family. And then I I administered or put Han Sheng and San or Han Anjue as administrators in these two commanderies. So the champion gives me minus one construction time and I give him builder as well. So it's minus two construction time in the Hepu region. And then Hanan Jue has a pretty good um, trait uh, or traits to be a good garrison based um, sentinel as an admin. And she also reduces construction costs. And then I basically asked for the Imperial Jade Seal from Sun Jian. And that got me up in prestige points. And with that, I got one spy position. I got one more uh, assignment, which let me put another supervised construction. One more administrator. Let me put those two administrators. And then I believe I got one more trade agreement. And then I have trade agreements with the Han Empire, the faction that's really small right next to him, uh, right here, Jia Shui, and then Liu Yao. And then from there, um, what else did I do? I Oh, I got the wife of Zerong, I believe. And she was a turncoat. So now I have somebody else that will be a distant relative and I can divorce her and still keep her as a distant relative so she will be available for marriage purposes. Now, actually, it's very interesting. She's a mom and she'll be a distant relative in my faction. This faction is bugged in that she won't necessarily count as part of the Xi family, even though she's a distant relative. So she should get penalized by minus 10 satisfaction with family. And then I basically extracted her. And you shouldn't extract right away. You, okay, I did build undercover network and then I did extract spy, which cost 25 extraction points or on, uh, cover points, which I just got from the build undercover network. You should wait a few more turns before you extract a spy, basically until you have at least 40 cover. So you can manage the upcharge that you could potentially take from extracting the spy. And then I just did the Seek Spouse, which only cost $2,000 for Shishi's faction. Across everybody that I have in my faction that wasn't married. And from there, this is the family tree. I basically also... Actually, I didn't see a pop-up for it. I basically also divorced Lady Shi from Shishi. And she shouldn't be a distant relative. But towards the end of the turn, I was like, Oh, let me just divorce her and then adopt her into my family so she's a distant relative. I divorced her from our faction leader and she was a distant relative, which is the first time I've ever seen this. So I just was like, okay, whatever. I'll just utilize her for marriage purposes. And then I married Liu Zhang into the faction. And then from there, I also married Liu Shi into the faction by marrying her, him in, uh, with Sejue. It was actually hard to make this marriage happen because it was like a negative 15. So I did an aggression pack first with Liu Biao to get him to like neutral attitude with me. And then the marriage was like only negative six or so. And then I was able to marry him into my faction. So I actually have all three characters in my faction that have clerk. So I have once I get all faction core positions open and I get an emperor seat or a contender, you can actually get minus six construction time by putting these three people into positions of power. And then aside from that, you know, everybody else is seek spouse that you see here and everybody is a distant relative in our tree. So that is it here. Oh, and I want to show one more little bug as well. I already mentioned the one of the lady that's a mom and once she's in the family, she will have the minus 10 satisfaction to the family. If we go to somebody like, uh, who's the wrong, I believe. Let me do this. Okay. So wrong is a, it's a distant relative because I married his people into my faction. So it shows here because in a, and he's an independent family member. He should be giving plus 10 splendor per turn. I'm not getting that shit. And I'm actually going to click end turn and I'm not going to be getting that. So yeah, we'll continue to the next turn now. All right. So a couple of actions here. Um, we did get a pop up of the ladies who wrong confederated a tribe, whatever. And then Muldu confederated the tribe that was over here next to me. So he's done with that. 
and then i started building up further my buildings so i now i have the temporary labor housing here and then the next level of the commerce building in this location and then i moved the three guys that were in this lumber yard i'll decide to get it later if sunshine becomes my heir then i'll just get this place down the line but then i basically moved these three guys out and i distributed them because i want them to go to commanderies that are landlocked in terms of the major region so if i make a vassal um they don't trade with anybody so, but then once i have enough trade agreements then i'll start trading with them so that's kind of like the gist of what i was trying to do and then aside from that i also deployed my two admins gave one of them the minus five construction time title and then got all of these guys recruited and now i'm just gonna recall them my lord so now my garrisons are built up to level three which is when i will be doing deals with the han empire so i'm gonna be boosting up my military strength and then i also recruited lucio who has 25 percent campaign movement range into that army i just showed move them out of the army so he has the 100 percent movement out of action points so now he's actually moving out as well to grab commanderies over here so basically that's kind of the gist of what i'm trying to do here and then one of these each of these guys are going to separate places she she though i think i want to take him let me see maybe i think i'll take him to this one over i don't know if this one's actually let me see an empire i'm not sure if this is actually held by the Han empire i actually think it is yeah, i guess i'll take him to this one and then the guy that's over here where is he oh no you you my friend will go to this one over here okay there we go so one two three four and then if i want to get another one that could do this one actually i think this one's landlocked yeah it would have to be this one over here maybe i don't remember this one. Oh no it isn't landlocked yeah so we can get a couple of places around here just don't want them to get any trade agreements as it is so anyways that's it here we're going to continue moving onwards and then just continue uh building up all of these locations i also removed the assignment title that gave minus five construction time uh from the guy that um han chung so yeah we don't have that title on him anymore let's continue all right on this turn i'm gonna get these armies to keep moving outwards towards those directions over there i recruited three generals here and then just basically this many other units to take advantage of the redeployment cost reduction that our current faction air has and then from there, I kept building up the population growth building and the, I think, the port, actually, in the major commandery of Hepu. And now what I'm doing here is, I'm doing a non-aggression pact. The marriage that I mentioned with the Han Empire on turn three, or one of the following turns. So it'll actually be another marriage, so you want to divorce this guy. And then I get four bronze items, doesn't matter how good they are, I got them through RNG, it is what it is. And then I'm going to get about 11k dollars from the Han Empire here, basically start getting even more money back. And then here, let's make sure that we divorce so we can get the next marriage to pop up. Let's divorce this guy. Now, if we look at this character, um, he does have patience, which is good. Uh, but I don't really want to keep him for any reason. So we're just going to have like a quadrillion characters. Dude. So let's just keep, kick him out of the faction because we don't really care about him. There we go. And then from there, now what we have is uh, a lot of extra money that we can utilize and then I will need potentially to give away some more items for the next turn. Well, we'll deal with that in a bit. But aside from that, I'm just moving everybody out towards these regions over here to acquire them. And then from there, still be able to just keep building up my regions. Uh, I'm not building the port. I'm building the major region so I can build this up to a tea parlor. And also I need to do that here as well. So I can take advantage of getting tea from the Han Empire in case that trade agreement ever breaks. And then there's a chance to get a spy, but Jampu's not that good of a spy to spend money on. So we're going to ignore him for now. So that is it here. We're pretty good. Oh, let me recall these guys. I don't necessarily want to keep them around. There you go. Your arrival is there welcome, go. my lord. And that is it. Let's continue. All right. On this turn four, I am now building up the state workshop and still continuing to, or starting to build a small city here. I got the minus one construction time reform. So it's instead of taking three turns to build the city here, it only taking two turns. I also leveled up Han Chong and gave him plus five food and administer commandery skill called Abundance. I kept moving out these guys further, so they're actually doing what they need to on these fronts. And then on this side, if we go to the Han Empire, Welcome, ooh, there's the next marriage. And then military access. Oh my god. And then let me see what we have left. We have, oh my god, a shaman. Oh shit. Mm, damn it. Those are some good items that I could actually use for the Sun Che marriage. It's actually kind of important. Let me go back here and then let me go to characters and then these items i can just start giving away this one this one and then i have another shaman oh my god i hate myself if i give that up um is there really like that item here that i can just oh maybe there 
four items. And then let's go back to the Han Empire. Let's make this deal. Enter Oop. freely, friend. Oop. Military access. And then what am I missing? Uh am I missing? Oh shit. What am I doing? Ah, one step at a time. Okay, here we go. Yep, I hate myself. Okay. And then but still, it's worth the money, so let's do this. Oh shit. Remember. Too much? Really? A little bit too much still. And this should even it out. So like 9.3k here from doing this deal. Bam. A successful bid. And then we don't care about this guy either. So we're going to go back to the family tree. And if we look at him, he's savant. He does have... Oh, he has one of those. Uh, and he's minus six public order. He's a faction leader. Oh, shit. He has wisdom of the river. Hmm. Not necessarily too bad. You know, I could give him a run if I wanted to. And then there's another another mediator from this guy's faction. What's his name? Um, from San Luis. Not, not good either, so we're not going to get him. And then this guy... I mean, we have people with Wisdom of the River already, so we don't necessarily care too much about this guy. And then we can also just kick him out of the faction. At least for service. There we go. So we still have two people available for marriage purposes. Hunching, actually, I could arrange a marriage. and Because I don't think I'm going to marry him to any females. And let's do this. I forgot about this. And then let's see this lady that he got. He got an academic. Oh, shit. And then she has the top level skill already. Okay. All right. So that will be it there. Not sure. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to do here. Let's continue. All right. And on this turn, I keep trespassing across this land to get over to these commandeeries here that are just like in the mountain areas. And then I move this guy over to grab this southern gen region. This guy will get a trade agreement. It's okay. We don't necessarily have to get that, keep that trade agreement or actually get it. We're good as we are. And then this guy will get this region over here. That will give me a total of four total uh, locations where I would have potential vassals um, from releasing or granting independence as administrators. And then I did get an unfortunate news that Sun Jen died the previous turn, so I can't get Sun Che. So it is what it is. We're going to grab all these regions at the cost that they cost, which is a pretty steep amount, which is like 8K instead of 4K because Sun Che won't be our heir. Um, so yeah, in your campaign, if you get Sun Che, it turns seven or later. That's perfect. And then you can just wait till that happens. So then you start getting all these regions and saving 50% of the total cost. In this campaign, I did not get that. That's okay. And then here, we get all these places built up. And then continue from here. Oh, and then what I did here was I gave the builder item to Han Anjue. So this place only is, one, is only one construction time. And then I'll give it back to Han Chang the next turn to get the pier built. And then a site or um, basically a tea parlor as well. And then something I did was I recalled the supervised construction the previous turn. And then I'm putting somebody else back into this position because I was waiting for this to get built. So I basically restarted the countdown here to keep this getting built up. So I'm not necessarily wasting time uh, in that aspect. All right. So I think that is it here. Let us and then let me see a spice. No, nothing that I care about. That is it here. Let's continue. All right. On this turn, I'm getting up the tea parlor getting built and then tea parlor as well in this other location. I actually got spent 16k to get these two common theories actually with uh basically acquired so i can just deploy admins in these positions and then aside from that i'm getting these guys up here and then these admins that i'll get here i need a reformed unlock so actually i can just start granting a family independence and then i'll get shishi over here to grab this location and then this guy all the way over here so it'll give me a, a total of four vassals to start out and then from there i'll just move potentially to build an army to push on Lady Wu and take this faction out because I don't want Sun Che to blow up in size in the south. So I can just directly confront them and just completely eliminate that potential enemy um, for the long run in the campaign. So that is it here. I think we're in a good state. Let us continue. All right. And on this turn, I have about 11K dollars right now and I want to get to 16K to acquire these two major regions over here and this one over here as well. And then I also have this guy who's going to try to acquire this major region all the way up here. Foolish. I actually deployed him the previous turn and I used the movement exploit so he could move. And then he's basically gotten all the way up here now. He's uh, Xie Xin, the guy with the 25% campaign movement range, who's my heir. And then I can actually continue building up these regions. I'm building up the pier here to get more commerce income. And in here, I could spend money to build this place up um, and get, you know, as much money as I potentially can. Here, let me see. 2K. Actually, hold on. Shui Li, he could be a vassal. Sorry, a uh, another guy to join my faction. Now, I don't think he's part of the family of Liu Yao, so let me see. Nope. Oh, oh my god, somebody else with clerk. Dude, what in the actual world? So I could get four characters with clerk? 
Oh, dude, let's just do it. You know, who cares, man? Yep. And built on a cover network. And then discredit character. Don't care. I could extract spy, but wait until we get to like, damn, I'm only getting two gain per turn. Yeah, that's really bad. So anyways, we'll just hold off here and keep it. Keep them just in this position as a spy. And we'll still we'll have the 8k for the next turn to get that region over there. So we should be good in that location. And here, just keep building this place up. I think we're pretty good. It's turn 7. And then in turn 8, I'll get one more administrative slot from the reform. And then from there, I'll be able to just start granting family independence across the regions that I'm starting to grab around these areas of the map. Let's go. All right. And here, we're slowing down our economic buildup as I want to have enough money for the next turn to at least get one of these guys to acquire one of these two regions. And that will make it one, two, three, four, five in total, which is the total that I need to get the plus 50 splendor per turn. And I'll max it out. And then I'll be able to stay godlike as I get tribute chests and maintain plus 10 satisfaction faction wide. And then the plus five public order. We're in a pretty good overall state around these areas. I don't think there's much else that I want to do. I'm still waiting to extract this guy. And that is it here. Let's continue. All right. So we actually got the event for Dao Zhan. So Dong Zhou will get killed. So there's a good chance we'll pull the confederation. So... Because I'm going to pull that confederation on turn 11, potentially. And Ma Shao appears on turn 12. I don't want to release any vassals just yet. As getting vassals will potentially cause war declarations with these... Or Ma Teng and Han Sui. And I don't want that to happen. I want Ma Shao to join my faction. So let's go over here. Let's just occupy this with Shishi. Let's recall his ass. And then keep this as it is. As I've been kind of keeping all these locations. And I still need some more money to grab this location up here. So we'll hold off on that. And then over here, let's raise an army with a couple of people. So we're ready to push on this location. So that could give me another location to basically have a vassal or just basically remove this guy from the picture. And then I want to get Shishi as well over here. And we have items that are good. This lady has the one that has judgment. So we definitely want to put the archers in her retinue. And then on this area, we have how much money actually. I can at least get 100 more income from industry. Or I can actually get more population growth, which is kind of important. Let's get the population growth. Okay. And then over here, we'll keep building this place up. This one as well. Um, Let me see. We got everybody that we... And, oh, let's go to this guy. He does have 40 already in cover. Let's pull him. And we'll get him into our faction. And what about... Oh, in terms of reforms, it's turn 8. It'll be turn 13. I think it'll be turn 13 before I need another administrator. Hmm. Because I do need this. What are these ones? Yeah, I can go full spy. You can go really nasty with spies. Um, I'd say here we can just get the commerce one so we can just keep building this place up. I mean, we need to get to the adjacent corruption reduction anyways, uh, because we're going to just start getting a lot of regions pretty soon. Um, I do need another trade agreement. This will actually do it. And I need to actually, I can actually build up these ports if I want to. Yeah, there's these advantages that I can go for. Yeah, let's get this trade agreement. I don't think there's anybody else that I want to do a trade agreement with. Oh, shit. Oh, god damn, dude. It is time we talked. The hell is Sun Shao? All right, so let's uh, request money here. Yep. Oh, my God. Okay. Take it. All right. Awesome. Very good. So I got another trade agreement. That gives me even more money. And then here, we definitely just want to keep building up all these regions. We got that getting built up. Uh, I think we need food because I'm going to level this up. That'll be plus eight food that I need in total. So let's build up all these regions. And then I can actually start building this up as well once I get the chance. Okay, let me do it right now. Oh, I don't have to. Okay. Shop. Tree income. No, do the peasantry income here. Yeah, I think we'll go full peasantry because of the lumber yard and fishing village around these areas. And I still need money to get this place up and running over here. Actually, if I think about it, drop this. How much money does that give me? Just enough to get 1800 to actually get this region and call it a day. Okay. I would meet with All right, that sounds good. I think not much else. Oh, shit. You guys are very unhappy on this. Oh, he is unhappy, but there's not much I can really do with him. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, that should do. Alright, and then there's no more titles that cost $100. Well, there's these ones too. Okay, that should stabilize things, even though that brings up my income per turn greatly. But I should be okay now. Alright, and then actually that won't, won't let me actually get the money to get that region up there, so... Uh, okay. Um, rice paddy... No, don't build it. Just save the money. Okay, let's go. Alright, so Mulu decided to push towards uh, Supan, who's at war with him, so he's gonna go down there. I'm gonna declare war against Mulu to actually get him to attack this region. And my garrison should be pretty strong to fend off him doing an auto-resolve, while I build up an army of full archers over here. I want to request to join war from Dong Zhuo. Don't ask for any money or anything, so we don't actually reset the recently signed deals with Dong Zhuo for the Confederation. And then here, we just need to actually attack him when he comes in, and then we should be able to uh, basically auto-resolve, and even then we should be able to actually win this, because Zhang Min has knight or fire arrows. We have crossbow extra damage for these uh, crossbowmen to get more AP damage, and this lady has judgment, so these archers have even more damage. And all these units are getting extra range firing rate, which the archers really are taking a lot of advantage of versus the crossbowmen um, because they actually shoot pretty damn fast uh, as it is. And then over here, I think I just kept this guy. I guess I'm just giving him up there. And then I don't care about any other of these regions. People's happiness is kind of ish, stable ish. So we'll keep this as it is and then continue here. I think next turn is the confederation. So we'll see how this goes. So Sunsha asked for a non aggression pack. I'm not necessarily going to take it just yet. Um, actually, you know what? Let's take it. And then from there, if we, we actually get the Confederation, he shouldn't even be declaring war on us as we have the non-aggression pact in our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Dong Zhou is dead. Oh my God. So it's time for me to just start the cleaning up shop. So let's go here. Oh, sorry. Let's go to diplomacy to Dong Pei Shan. And then, okay, I just need to I need, I need to give a good summary of what's going on here. Oh, shit. Fuck, I fucked up. I wasted $3,000 marrying this chick to Shishi. Should have done that. But yeah, forget about her. I don't necessarily care her about her being in a faction anymore, so we can just... Her. Like everybody else is a decent relative-ish. There's this guy that I got that's a clerk. Who is... Damn, not bad as a... Oh, my God, he can get plus nine satisfaction if I unlock all the positions. Hmm him around damn what two thousand dollars to adopt hmm. and then that'll, i'll remove the penalty he has of happiness that people are gonna get pissed off what it is okay so wait where is he okay yep that's everybody right and then i have one female for marriage which is exactly what i need okay let's go back here so shenanigan time um almost wait Yeah, we can do this if I'm happier Turned with us. And then we want to go to Dong Zhuo. Where the hell is his ass? Okay. If Dong Pei Shan is courageous warrior, you hit the jackpot. Because you can join war or request to join permission to war. And she's going to really want you to join war. So when you, jo when you do the confederation through marriage and you add a simple war against a weak-ass faction, this just goes positive to like positive 17. So you can just do the confederation right now and call it a day. If she's not courageous warrior, this plus 17 won't necessarily be there. It might be negative. It'd be really bad. So to pull off the confederation, you have to liberate. And therefore, that's why I said don't do any deals with Dong Zhuo the first 10 turns. And so you can basically keep this, you know, as low as possible. The recently signed deals at negative 17 right now. It starts at negative 50 and it resets to negative 50. And then also don't do deals with her right now. Um, like instantaneously because she's trending towards negative 110 or sorry to positive 110 so you can't get the blade of of dong zhuo um here but coming back here we're going to unify and oh shit not that and then request permission to declare war let's find the cool guy there we go and then positive 17 and that will do it negative one whatever dude we boom in sympathy in this. okay so we have to mediate peace because he was at war with Sun Che and with Sao Sao. We're good. No more no more deals here. We're good. Now, I did uh, level up. I did just get 50 prestige. I did get negative 20 divine relations with everybody from the Prime Minister. Plus 10 satisfaction and plus 10% income from peasantry. You got to take all of that into account. We vassalized the Han Empire, so we're making that money. And then we leveled up. And what we want here is 
we want at least one more administrator to put into different positions and utilize them now i have locations that i have to build up i have to build up hedong and jin jizao jin i think it is i need at least two administrative slots and then i have two slots left to put people in so i could potentially get some trade agreements we'll potentially we'll see what we can get there assignments are also great let's at least get one more obviously that will actually help us level up people i think we're good with this kind of distribution at the moment to help build up our regions as easily as possible all right it is shenanigan time so i'm gonna ask peace with liu bei form coalition and ask for money and now everybody's gonna be much easier so to get peace with that i started a war with because of my strategic situation further improving all right next we're gonna get peace with yan bai hu and marriage with yan ju to get him into our faction so we remove the five percent milli evasion that he's getting and i can put it into my positions of power once i get uh, the core positions unlocked once we get to uh what the intending emperor seat or whatever so yep we get this one next okay next we're getting peace with juan xiao and getting 14 1500 almost dollars from him from doing this okay next one is han Fu. And we get 2.2k dollars here. Next one is Liu Dai for 730. Liu Yu for 1k dollars. All right. And Wang Quan for 779. All right. And then Zhang Yan, not the bandit, for 1700 dollars. And now San Yan, the bandit, for only 102 dollars. And then Sen Jian here to just make it happen. Two bronze items being traded. And then here I'm pulling off a marriage with Yuan Chu uh, to marry Yuan and Jian to my faction. That will make him happier to make this deal possible. And bring him into in line with my faction, which will piss off uh, Lu Shang and uh, Liu Biao. So let's do this. And then with GSC, I'm doing peace trade agreement, giving getting some money and trading away two little uh, silver items to make this one happen. Okay, next I'm marrying Daoxian to Lu Bu. And now I am adopting Lu Bu into my faction so he can become my heir in a little bit. Additionally, I've removed a lot of items from a lot of people so I can utilize them for trade purposes to get a lot of money. All right, next, I'm going to divorce Yan Ju from the faction. I mean, from the family. So he'll be now a kind of just sitting there. And now what I wanted to do that for is because I want to go to Lu Sheng and Glad he'll have Lu Zheng available for marriage. Another great character. And then let's just request money here. He's going to give me all of that. Let me actually trade ancillaries. There we go. Four. 3444 and that will do okay and now with that there's some active spies that i can get and then some of the ones that are worthwhile is i think this lady is a bandit so that will be great as she can have poison volley which would be really good and then Wang Dan might have stalker so both of these guys are good so you can just start with her first and oil on the cover network and then we'll extract spy in just a bit but there are oh my god there's so many characters we can actually make unhappy and make him leave this faction so yeah there's that and I still have a lot of money left. Now, there's a lot of shenanigans that I still want to do here. So, in terms of court, right? I do want to make Lubu my heir because he's so unhappy at the moment. Now, to make this happen, it takes a lot of steps. Or a couple of steps, at least. So, Shi Chin here is going to go into this position down here to become an administrator. You have to do this first, okay? And then we're going to put him into a position like Taiwan, which is Dan Shu, I believe. okay there we go so we're gonna go there and now we're gonna grant family independent oh oof that was close okay go to lubu Where the hell is he yep we're going to lubu and it looks pissed and then we're gonna remove this how i'm doing it from non-equipable to equipable now he's a little bit happier i hope and then from here on out what we're going to do we're going to grant family independence to get splendor per turn from uh people leading factions they have to be people that are Chi uh, last name. Just take that into account. We're releasing him first to grant independence. So we can get Splendor there. And then for Lubu, we're going to make air right now. Boom. And now he's super happy. So we got Lubu as air. Jesus Christ, dude. God damn. Okay. And then from there, we go to... Uh, we're not... Okay, we're going to go to Diplomacy. Not diplomacy. What am I doing? Okay. Uh, court. We have other Xi people of last name that we want to give up. For example, this guy. I don't really care about him that much. So let's give him up and put him like, I don't know, in Yudu. Luling. It's, it's called by region, dude. Uh, wait, I think. Mandiri. Oh, no, Luling. Okay, my bad. I was looking at this wrong. So grant family independence to him. And then there's one more guy that I have. 
And this was the key. This is what I was waiting for this whole time. He has uh, Art of War. So we're definitely going to remove that from his ass. Go to his ass. Anything else? I'm leveled up. And then she is Tax Collector. God damn, she's bad. Yeah, I guess I can just utilize her as an admin. So go down. I don't want to deploy her because of Vayne. So yeah. Okay, where is... GG. Okay, here. Move out of war so I don't lose it. Very good. And then he is going to get now released. Where is he? Here. And then we're going to put him in this location. Commandiri Juzang. There we go. And then with that, we got Path of Glory. So now Path of Glory is being distributed across all our commanderies in the north and in the south. And now I have to actually do this before I grant family independence to him because it's kind of bugged at the moment. Let's go over here. I don't want to build right away. No. Oh, nice. It's got this one over here. There you go. Support for, now we got 10% from commerce everywhere. And then I got to get a Lord's chest and then give this to Zhang Ming. So we'll do that. Coming back here for Chi Chi. Now we can actually release him just like that. And now he's vassalized. So now I have three vassals. They're all in the southern area of the map, surrounded by Han Empire regions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go here. A and for each of them, we're going to offer guarantee of autonomy and get back about 1820, I believe, income. Actually, that's it. Much less than I expected. Interesting. Oh, 40. Boom. Okay. That's Your one. Terms are acceptable. Let's go to this guy. Here we go. Speak quickly. Offer guarantee of autonomy. And 20. Here we go. Boom. We reach an understanding. And then I should have one more. Okay. Glad to see you. And request payment. Oh, oh shit okay boom we accept your offer yeah. so they're happy that's fine okay and then in terms of i don't think there's anything else i want to do in diplomacy so i don't care about my military strength right now um what i care about though is that i'm gonna put some people to actually become oh god damn it i can't do shit with this guy over here so she has reward filling and corrupt so i'm gonna what put her for that assignment my to help uh, my all my regions to deal with that and then here, I got to deal with everybody. So this guy, I don't care about the units he has. So recall, 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 recall. I answer your request. And then I don't care about him. I am at your we'll see, I do care about. So let's go down. There's some people that I really don't want to keep in my faction. So if I look here, new Fu. New Fu, release. Okay, there's one. And who else is not family? Zurong, what does he have? Militia veteran. He does have reach, but I already have enough good characters, so I can just actually save this money. I don't necessarily need it. My good. lord, how can I serve? Let's make sure I remove him from the faction before I forget. Go wrong. Very good. And then I have him. I have this guy. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. Um, remove. Oh shit! Oh, that was close. Air militia. Okay. It's going to cost me, and I'm going to like to reploy this guy. So, it is what it is. And then, oh no, there might be a war declaration the next turn. Because I made all these vassals. Mateng might go to war against my vassals. Or the alliance might go to war against my vassals. I have to watch out for this. Shit. Okay. How can I, serve I, mean, I didn't want that to happen. Oh well. I forgot about it. That's okay. So, here, I could definitely just my recall Lord, him. I hope all is well. But I want him to go to some place like... Edong. I should have done this before I built the building. Let's go find... Jesus Christ. Okay. Boom. Excellent. And then I have one more admin spot, I believe. I'm not going to put anybody there just yet. I'm going to have to wait on that. I don't care about this one. 
And then let's give Zhang Liao the builder item. And then continuing here. Yep, we need then. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing. Okay, and then I need food here. Like bad. This place gives me four food at the moment. This one done. Nine. One hundred percent food from farming. There's nothing there. Yeah, I probably will need this, and then supervised construction. I'm going to lose. Then I don't necessarily need money up there. Here, I need to build this place up. We'll keep this one as it is for now. We won't turn uh turn it uh took it, tweak it, and then we're gonna recall Zhang Liao. Actually, no. I bid you welcome, my lord. Okay. You have need. And Lubu doesn't need to stay up here either. But we're getting about oh my god, dude, we're getting six k dollars right now. And because we do get 15% income from Silk, we got Silk all the way up here in the north. And we'll be able to get all three regions if we go to war against Hansui and Mateng, actually. So we should be able to get a 15% extra multiplier from Silk and take advantage of that. And then me and the south, I have to deal with actually taking the southern regions um, by myself. And then here, I need, I need food like crazy. I need food like crazy. And then what else can be built? The passes, which I don't necessarily care about building. Jin Zhao, I said I was going to wait, but just I have the money. Just take it right now. And I need to build this up for the defenses. God damn, Gondu's getting huge. Okay, we'll have to deal with his ass. That will do. And then I'll probably want to deploy Lubu down here for this army to take care of this. Or well, I actually want to deploy an army up here in the north to deal with this area. Remember that we can now annex territories of the Han Empire if we want to. So if I keep making a lot of money, you, you just have the chance to just walk through all of the south. And then the northern areas over here that I still not acquired. Well, maybe they just the salt mine here. Don't really push because of the deployable bandits all the way up there in the north. Then in terms of core positions here, we have all of these now open. I can't forget about this. Now, some people are a bit of assholes to keep happy. That's the only way to really describe them. Like, there's some high-level people that are just fickle. Like, this guy would definitely get pretty happy. Let's put him there. We went up in money, so we can keep him in that position. And then this will give way more food, which we definitely want. And it'll make Lu Zhang happier. And he's at 69 happiness. Actually, I can start removing the titles that I've given to people. Now, if we go to everybody... He has the upkeep. I'm looking at the left to see who still has titles. There. Wait. Oh. The other faction. Oh, here we go. Um. Yeah, I might have messed up with her. One. Income from commerce. Not really anything. Oh, she's going to be so unhappy when I... Yeah, I think there's some people still that I need to be careful with. Okay, he's got zeal. He's got reach. That's mother and fury. Jesus Christ. Okay. Nasty. Alright, so I think we're pretty damn good. I think this is a great place to just like... Say that the campaign is in a very good overall state. You can just easily build up an army up here in the north to push against Gongdu. You can build up military buildings here in Anding if you want to, along with food. You actually make this into a military recruitment location to push into these areas. You got all these areas in, in this side of the map to push into and grab. And then I'm just going to click enter to just basically... Oh, forget about the passes. Just min-maxing, really. You really need to do this, but... 